Welcome, 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 everybody, to another episode of Just Talking to You. I'm your host, Big Smooth, a.k.a. the People's Champion. I'm not here alone. I am here with the infamous, the world-famous, the world-renowned crew. Say what's up to everybody, the crew. Hey, everybody. Hello. All right, man, we're going to start it off, man, from my uh, right to my left. Shay Boogie, introduce yourself. Hey, everybody, it's your girl Shay, and I'm nursing a hurting shoulder. Oh, that's all right, Shay. It'll be okay. We're going to pray for you, man. Never would have made it. Shut up. Never could You ain't right. You're not right. What, you just left right, church? Man. Hey, oh. hey, hey. Was that did shirt? you? Did hey, you was just that, leave hey, church? Hey, was that the shoulder that you threw out at Bible study Sunday night? <laughs> With that being I said, with that being I was, said, I was I was doing praise dances, so yeah, you know, you raised the roof when you in church. Oh man, I was raising the roof. With that being said, Nene, introduce yourself, please. <laughs> I'm Nene from around the way way. <laughs> and, and, and she only make one show a day day <laughs> day day. Oh my god. Oh, we're gonna swing on over to my I'm girl. I'm done with him. <laughs> I, I know you is. We gotta swing on over to my girl. Looking, look, looking, looking like Kitty did when she was like uh 10 years old. But introduce yourself, Dre Day. Hello, everybody. It's your girl Dre Day, and uh I'm fully vexed and I still wear a mask because I don't Amen. trust y'all. Amen. She said, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right, man. Hey, the best, hey, the best engineer in the game right now. Philly D, introduce yourself to him, man. What's going on, party people? It's Philly D, and this is the place to be. We're just talking to you. Just a conversation. Don't take it personal. Breathe. Join us online. Make sure you subscribe. Tell a friend. Let's get it, y'all. All right, all right, all right. And our two our crew members that's not here tonight. Our girl, uh, Miss Toya, she had a, a incident with her uh, son. Uh, he was bleeding, man. Uh, just keep her in your prayers and everything. Miss Toya's son uh, had to go to the ER. So let's keep Miss mm -hmm. Toya in your prayers. Uh, also, uh, words of wisdom. He is on the road again. That's that's some of the uh, things that you do when you got your own business, man. And uh, you got workers that don't do what they're supposed to. Miss Words of Wisdom is doing it. He's on the road, willing and dealing. And last but not least, my man, Chris Dorian. I don't know where the hell Chris Story is. I ain't going to lie to you. I don't know where <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't even lie for that bastard. Hey, it, I, I know he your mama's favorite. Uh, man, hell, he may be over your mama's house. Man, we don't know where he at tonight. The so he, he could definitely be over your mama's house right now. Uh, with his bib and his gray sweatshirt, uh, gray, uh, gray jogging pants and no pockets. But yeah, like, <laughs> like like we say, we don't trust people with no pockets because if uh, you can't trust nobody with no pockets, man. And uh, Chris Dorian probably ain't got no pockets on. So very well said that your mama shouldn't trust him tonight. But I mean, it is what it is. And last but not, hey, I'm Big Smooth, People's Champ. 
your mom, your auntie side dude from back in the day, man. So, hey, mm-hmm. how everybody doing today, y'all? How y'all doing? <laughs> he been oh, doing pretty good. Well, That's well. good. My my, my right them chops. I'm just talking about Shea Boogie and her shoulder that she hurt at church Sunday night. <laughs> First of all, don't do my Ooh, girl you, like that. Number one, don't right. do her like that. I hey. knew I was going to catch hell, though, because, boy, he can't run that corner. No, no, so no call ass. Hey, I got it. I say, boy, her ass, no call, no show. And I, I think you see her. <laughs> you thought she was doing the young jock, man. <laughs> Meet me in the tram. I'm going down. Meet me. Hey. I'm like, she in there party. And then, and then she looked. She Then when she saw me peek around the corner, she did like this. <laughs> That's what she I did, was like, I, I looked at my phone as it was ringing, and I was like, mm, I'm just going to take the smoke today. <laughs> she kicked it, though, man. She kicked ah, it. Ooh, man. this weekend was something else. Yes, it was. It was one for the books. And if you guys tuned in Sunday, man, uh my our buddy, our baby Dre Day, she had a, a flat tire and everything. And uh she was on her live with a Sunday until that flat tire hit her and everything. But needless to say, she made it home safely, and she is here tonight with us. And we are just so didn't get proud of traffic. you guys. And that's, she that's didn't, all it's about. They didn't touch right. her. They didn't touch her goodies and everything. They, Nobody they didn't. Take me in my special no no place. <laughs> they didn't. <laughs> they didn't touch her hello. They didn't touch her hello kitty. So I mean, <laughs> hey, shout out to my girl Jay Day, man. Got, hey, hey, got a Wuhan place and everything. Ain't nobody fond of with it. Hey, but if you want to be a blessing to Dre Day, you can send her a cash app. At just talking to you. If you want to help her get these other set of tires, she's getting ready to plan on getting. So just send mm. her a cash out. Just talking to you. And we'll make sure Dre Day gets it for those tires. Thank you. And I took the 22s off my car because I was like, I will save money on tires if I just mm-hmm. get regular rims. No, this is I'm still buying the same amount of tires every year that I was before. Mm. Wow. We got potholes galore out here. It's, it's bad. Yes, we do. It's bad. Oh man. What what's y'all governor name? He don't uh what's his name? What's y'all governor Hot name? Hot Wheels. Hot, Hot Wheels. Wheels. Greg, Greg, Hot Wheels, something. Abbott. Hey, mm. he he don't fix the road down there in uh Dallas. You see, we almost froze last winter. But I think exactly. down here it's done by county. Okay. Yeah, so it's up to the county to fix the roads, but well, how how Will's got a little influence? He can he can make some things happen if he want to. Let, he, let he, hey he hey let about one, really, hey hey, about this, uh, hey let hey, hey let what let what let, let one of his uh major uh what do you call them constituents that that stay may, may have stayed in that area that you guys are living in, the people that really donates to one of his top fundraisers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let them he stand himself caught COVID. He don't care. I'm just saying, he don't oh, wow. care if it's not his way. It's the highway. You know, I mean, he, he out here, he way. out here giving ten thousand dollar bounties out to people who snitch on folks getting abortion. So whatever, I don't even like that dude. Oh wow, he needs to be voted out. He needs to be rolled out of office. Oh. Let me not say that. I'm not gonna say what I was about to say. Hey, Father, forgive me. It's just talking to you, man. Nobody. Hey, we 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 bring all the smoke. We want all the smoke. No, nah, mm. I don't want. I don't want Texas Rangers at my door. Mm. Mm. He. We we just gonna roll him gently on out of office. Then we just roll right. him on out to his handy van. Hey, yeah. put, it, put it like this: Is is it a lot of people? That's one to get him up out of office. Most of Texas wants him out of office. So when when will he be? Uh, when is the next election for uh, the governor governor uh, governor election? I, I think next year. I, it can't come fast enough. It's either next year or in twenty four. Oh wow! 
So, so uh, it's safe to say that uh, you guys may uh, look elsewhere for a mayor. I mean, for a governor. Yes. Hopefully. I, oh, it's okay. going to be in 24. It's going to be 24. But uh, I would have liked to have seen uh, uh, Beto O'Rourke be our governor. And Is he running? I don't know. I doubt it now. I don't know. Well, he, somebody needs to. I don't care who it is. It could be I'll blues. Run. Blues. I'll run. Don't worry about it. I got it. Come on. I got you, girl. I'll be your mm -hmm. I'll be your <laughs> man. You can be my lieutenant governor. I got you. I'm with you. Oh. Dan Patrick ain't worth the damn neither. Lieutenant Governor nope. Dan Patrick, he ain't worth the damn neither. Okay. I didn't even know that was his name. <laughs> <laughs> That's how effective he is. Greg okay. Abbott said when they asked him, you know, they was like, you know, so people, you know, people who get raped, if they get pregnant as a result of the rape, you know, you're going to require now that they go full term with yeah. this baby. And y'all know what this, what this dude said. You can say this bastard, but go ahead. I was going to say this nigga, but he, he can't even have that. Okay. <laughs> y'all know what this dude said. What did he say? He said, well, we're going to make sure we eliminate rapists. Hmm? How you do that? Please explain to me how you do that. And do you know the psychological damage that that's going to do to some women to have a they rapist baby? They do not care. They do not care. And then if you you take your baby to the fire station and all that other stuff, then they're going to try to charge it. It's gonna it's it's gonna get bad. But I thought I thought that if they took it to a hospital or fire station, it was a safe place and they couldn't do anything to them. But look at what look at how many babies you could have dumped on your doorstep then. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Exactly. Or how many women is gonna fly to different countries see what to they the abortions. Well, see, bad. that's the whole ten thousand dollar thing. So if you fly to another country to get an abortion then you can be sued. Um, if anybody who drove you to the hospital knew that you were flying out of country to get an abortion, they could be sued. Wait and, a minute. And by anybody. Why? Huh? Why? Because they aided and abetted an abortion. So wow. if I leave the state of Texas to go get an abortion, they gonna charge me Can't up? you be arrested though? Huh? Can't you be arrested? Mm -hmm. I saw that on a movie, though. Um, I saw that on The Handmaid's Tale. Man. <laughs> but yeah, that's so what I, I'm in the Supreme Court uphold, upheld that mess. So other states are going to try this. Oh, so yeah, that, that's already what Florida, yeah. I think they said Florida trying to do it. So, but theirs is already eight weeks, I think. So they so, so so they're trying to just say, hey, you got to have these babies regardless, right? Mm -hmm. And what well, they believe, take care of them. what's the well, thing well, is, well, what's the so thing crazy. is, I'm gonna tell you what my thing is though. They saying you got to have these babies, but you create this coronavirus to eliminate some pop, eliminate the population. But I'm I'm not going to go there. I'm I'm not going to <laughs> go to. But. But go ahead, Dre. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I don't know. I'm, you I'm good. So you good. No, I was going to say, you know, I guess they banking on, even though you don't want a child, they banking on the fact that as a woman, your maternal instincts will kick in. But like for people like me, when I had my child, I knew immediately I didn't want any more kids. Facts. I knew that. Facts. And, and I knew before he was born that I didn't Facts. want any more kids. So if I had had another child, it's not necessary that my maternal instincts would kick in and right. I would love and want to, you know, for this child to, I'd want this child to have a, a good life, good well-being. It's just not with me, you know? Right. And so, and I say, I say that, but I, I never had the opportunity to have another child. So I don't know, but not everybody is just gonna go on ahead and get into that role. Some people are gonna be like, "Well, 
I didn't have an abortion. The baby's out now and the dumpster's outside. Right. Wow. Right. And, and sad as that is, that's gonna be that's gonna be the truth of it. That's gonna be a lot of reality. That yeah, that is gonna be the harsh reality of a lot of situations, man. And it's sad to say, but uh, we just gotta just keep on praying and go from there. Hey, fentanyl, mm. lace cocaine and circulation, man. It kills a uh, comedian, Fuquan Johnson, and three mm. others in Venice, California. Also. Rest, rest in peace, Michael Michael Williams. Uh, my, that was my boy Omar from The Wire. If y'all watch The Wire, Omar, um, uh, Michael Williams played Omar off The Wire. And uh, he was on Boardwalk Empire, man. He also overdosed a few, late, uh, few days later in his New York City apartment, man. Hey, what is up with these drugs and these people are ODing on it, man? Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Um, you know, I wonder what would it, what would make somebody want to put that stuff in there. I know it's cut with it, but I mean, do are they just not measuring it, or man, fentanyl, are they doing it on purpose? Like, what's the deal? You think about it. Fit, they, they, we know they're chasing that high, but fentanyl lace cocaine. That means they don't know how much is cut with it because. A lot of this stuff is pure. They 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 taking pure, and it's a big difference than, than 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 chopping it down and everything. This stuff is pure that they put in there, man. And man, when they get when that pure hit their system, man, hey, pure fit. Oh man, they hey man, they checking out. I'm telling they say you. You can't even touch that stuff. No, you can't. Now I was listening I wanted... to. Um... <clears throat> No, I was gonna say, I wonder if you can't touch it, are the people that's selling this saying, hey, this was laced with this, don't do this, or do they just no, let they them they it? they just letting them. So when I was listening to the Ricky Smiley show, it was like a doctor on there, and then they was telling about the people that died. She said it can be, she said some people do lace they drugs it. But you can mess up and put as tiny as a, a little piece of salt too much, and it can cause you your life because they don't know what they're doing but they say in most cases some people that's overdosing it from it overdosing from it don't even know that they got it like it's it's mixed in because people mm. taking that upon themselves to to do it that way and people are dying and i'm like i mean it's crazy because some people want a little bit of more high so they know they taking it but they not thinking about that that one little, little pinch could be too much. And then they they just, some, some like one man said that, um, or, or one lady say her son just got seizures for the rest. He, he didn't die, but he just, he now he take medicine for seizures for the rest of his life. Wow. Yeah, man. but. Mm -mm. I think this is a valuable lesson to teach younger kids too, man. Teach these kids, man, because. One bad decision can cost you your life. Yeah. If you want to be cool and call yourself smoking, smoking with your friends, smoking uh, marijuana with your friends and stuff, you don't know what's in it and everything. Couple and couple, couple, two or three inhales, inhalants, man, and you could be out of her, man. And, and 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 I know Michael Williams. He was saying he fought addiction for a long time, man. He's been mm. fighting addiction for over 20 years. Mm. And uh, and it's it, it just takes its toll, man. And uh, enough is enough, man. I mean, God, man, I'm just, just, we lost some good people, man. We, we, we lost some people, man, because of, I wouldn't say lack of knowledge, but uh, I mean, they may not have known that the cocaine was laced with fentanyl, but these guys get wherever they get it from. If you guys watched uh, American Gangster, when uh, when uh, my boy Frank Lucas was going overseas getting that heroin and stuff, that was pure. He had to mix that with some man. He couldn't get they couldn't do that a hundred percent pure. And uh, my brother, he works for a pharmaceutical company, 
where they uh, have fentanyl and all type of uh, drugs and stuff, man. And they got to wear hazmat suits around that stuff, dealing with that. They got to wear masks and hazmat suits and everything. Mm. Wow. That's crazy. Hey, Philly, what you got to say about it, man? Hey, what you got to add to it, brother? Man, uh, hey, man, just crazy, crazy stuff, man. So I just read a story uh, today that they uh, basically pulled a kick door on this spot down the floor, and they found, like, right under two pounds of fentanyl. Not the cocaine, the straight fentanyl. And they saying that the amount of fentanyl could basically have been enough to kill right under 500,000 people. That's how much mm -hmm. fentanyl was in this place. So the thing of it is, is, you know, you just, you got to be careful. I mean, me, I've, I got sinuses, so I've never been interested in sniffing no coke or putting anything up my nose. The only thing going up my nose is my Vicks nasal spray. So I don't, right. I don't play that. But um, you got to trip off some of the stuff they cut this stuff with. I don't know if y'all know. Uh, there have been times where they cut. And I remember the cocaine is strong enough. Man, they cut this stuff with boric acid. Boric acid is used for pest control, okay? Ooh. That's like, that's enough right there. If you thought about it. Creatine. Brian know what creatine is. Why mm -hmm. the hell would you be cutting that with some creatine? That is a workout recovery supplement, okay? Yeah. Yep. Uh, laxatives. Okay, laundry detergents. Okay, we talking about some crazy stuff here, and then this the thing. Of course, laundry detergents. I remember the Tide suits back in the day before we got the pies, got the blue crystals and stuff in it. Uh, you know, that stuff going in your body, the, the, the blue crystals, the, the white powder, and any of that stuff. But um, another thing, we were talking about this subject uh, a couple of episodes ago. We're talking about um, the U.S. leaving Afghanistan. We're talking about opioids and stuff like that. Well, what is fentanyl? Fentanyl is from the opium poppy. So mm -hmm. in some cases, it can be 50 times up to 100 times stronger than morphine. Morphine will knock your ass out, okay? And the fentanyl started, they were making these patches to help uh, cancer patients with yep, treatments, to help them with saying. the pain. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So... You know, um, you know, it's 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 crazy. And then this is the the thing, it's synthesized from the opium poppy. So it's not even a natural process. You know, synthetic is fake, means fake shit, you know, for y'all out there, you know. So the only thing really you won't like synthetic is really some oil if you have a high mileage car or something like that. Other than that, you don't want to be putting synthetic stuff in your body. You were hearing about uh the people smoking the fake uh fake loud fake weed and stuff or I forget the name of it was like Delta uh K2 or whatnot. Yeah. So yeah. we were hearing about that stuff back in the day. You do not want this synthetic stuff. If you're gonna go there, get the real thing. And uh you know I'm not advocating drug use or anything like that. But um you better off taking your behind to the dispensary and getting you a joint, you know, than um uh, than uh getting this crap. I'm just mm -hmm. keeping it real. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true. That is so sad, man. So definitely, definitely, that's a message that you definitely share with our younger generation. These young people, let them know before you think about it, before you call yourself succumbing to peer pressure, think about it, man, because choices have consequences. I always tell my, my kids, good choices, good consequences, bad choices have bad consequences. So uh, Think about everything before you do anything. Every choice has a consequence. So that is something that they definitely need to know going forward and everything. Speaking about our kids, man, uh, would y'all let y'all daughters, if y'all had daughters, everybody on the show got sons, except for me, I got a daughter, but would you let your daughter listen to Meg Thee Stallion and Cardi B? What y'all think about that? If I had a daughter, I probably wouldn't. I don't even listen to them. I mean, I, I I listen to some music of theirs, but I don't listen to that type of music or like rap music. Right. But if I had a daughter now. Nah. Yeah. You know, I, I am all for, you know, the women being able to speak their mind and rap whatever they want to rap about. But I feel <clears throat> like sometimes it can get a little too 
what's the word a sexual maybe explicit. Is that the, even a little too explicit or raunchy I mean I get man the stuff they be saying it's like baby, look, I'm, I'm, I'm almost 40 I'll be like god damn they did especially the, I'm blushing especially that WAP video that WAP video man like, whoa it introduces the like me and I, I'm I'm sorry I'm just old oh, some of the stuff they were saying I'm like what the hell is that and you know and so it'll teach a young woman you know a young female what those things are you know mm-hmm. like I say I'm the age I am and I was like what is that and I'm like oh wow yeah wow. so I could appreciate you know the argument that men get to say how come how come a woman can't woman can you can but to me you can go just too far like that performance they did on the was it the BT awards or was it the grammys it was horrible i couldn't even enjoy the win or enjoy the song because the performance was so sexual and raunchy it was horrible so you don't have to go that far to be part of the industry or you know sell records or streams you know th- there's a level of sexuality you can have before you cross the line into just straight hood ranch so i get it but i don't enjoy the music as much as i wish i could if it wasn't so dirty what about you Dre Day? how old is this daughter and does she have a twin brother She said, how old is his daughter? Okay. For 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 giggles, uh the daughter is 13. Daughter is 13. So is this a matter of her saying I'm finna go and download uh Meg Stallion's album or me? How is she coming about hearing this music? Her friends at school. Okay. I listen so what to, this means uh, is, uh, uh-huh. she's heard it without me. And so now, what my job now is to help her interpret whatever it is that she's heard. Because the you can't put toothpaste back in the tube. So, so you got it. No. I'm not going, I'm not going to buy it for her. And if she asked me, hey, can I download this? Absolutely not. But what I can't stop is what's going on over there at that school. You know, I, I can't go with her. I could, but then mm-hmm. I'd be unemployed. <laughs> so now probably what I need to do now instead of spazzing out and making it her favorite album is, you know, say, okay let's let's talk about this let's talk about this what did you hear you know what questions do you have or whatever because i think a lot of times ooh, what did i just do what the fuck around with you uh, i don't know okay. something my whole screen went black what the fuck um, wrong with you you all right yes i said my screen oh black. okay okay i didn't know what the hell was wrong with you but go ahead baby i'm sorry anyway uh I, I just feel like I feel like at that point, you know, um, you know, I just I have to get in there and I have to help her interpret whatever it was that she listened to, you know, in in the right way and you know, and talk about what's appropriate, you know, what's age appropriate, what's not, um, why she should or should not listen to it, you know. Yeah. And you know, at that point, but am I am I actively going out and getting it? No. Am I gonna turn the radio if I if it's in the car? I might, I probably would, because if my mom's in the car, I'll fast forward over some songs. You know, I'll skip to the next song. Cause I don't yeah. need to subject people, you know, certain people to everything that I've allowed in my life. So, you know, that would be the thing. But my answer would be the same if I had a son that right. age. You know, because I don't, I don't, I honestly don't believe in in treating boys and girls different. They got to go out into the exact same world. So why am I gonna treat y'all? I, why am I gonna treat one with kid gloves 
and let the other one run wild and be a heathen. That don't make sense to me. Oh, and good. I'm glad that you said that because that is one of the topics that I know Words of Wisdom wanted us to hit on, and we're going to hit on it real soon. Uh, why is it different? Why, what is the difference between men and females, the difference between uh, being a man and being a female and everything, how everything, the field is not an equal playing field. So we'll talk about that in a much later episode. It's going to be a very good one, man. So me, when I let my daughter listen to it, no, nah, I wouldn't want to open Pandora's box. Uh, I wouldn't, I would not uh, be forward and everything. These girls, young ladies look at uh figures on tv and want to emulate them they get that mindset of okay this is cool she making money she doing that and doing this by doing her body like this and saying this and saying that but it's just a facade with their painting and everything so i wouldn't personally let my daughter listen to nothing like that or either download that because uh they are very impressionable and everything and uh they have to realize that whatever these uh entertainers are saying and doing 95 percent of them aren't doing what they're saying in their lyrics so they have to come to the realization that a lot of the they're doing it for entertainment purposes uh like with these young guys that's rapping ain't nobody popping no glocks and putting bodies in the ground if they would they wouldn't be they'd be in jail so i mean it's just a facade that they're painting and everything they're not living the life that they are singing and entertaining and rapping about and everything. So me, for me, it's a solid, uh-uh, won't happen. Hey, got to ask y'all this question, man. We're going to segue into this one. Do you believe it is good? It is in a good scheme of things to get your child a car and pay the car note. Mm. Nope, not at all. My, You know, I'm going to say this. <clears throat> As a parent, you want your kid to have better than you. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, when you give them better, sometimes you can, if the right word is cripple them to the point to where they don't know how to survive or do things on their own, or it takes them longer to learn how to do these things because you give them everything. And then they don't, they may not appreciate what you know, what you gave them. So to me, I think some things you should have to buy and purchase and enjoy purchasing on your own so that you appreciate it more. So if my kids really needed my help as far as buying a car, getting insurance, I may help them, but I'm not going to buy it for them, you know, because you know, I, I just think it's too much. And I don't want all that extra responsibility on me, you know, mm -hmm. having to worry about co-signing and if something happened, they can't pay the bill. It's going to fall on me and my credit. So I had to protect myself. So no, that is not my responsibility. You know, they need to learn how to do that. So I, I don't know. I would help, but I wouldn't buy. Oh, wow. Man, what about you, Nene? I, I I help, I will help with the first, like I did. I helped him buy their first cars. My my oldest son still got his first car, but my second son, he wanted to go and get him a car. And he saved his own money for the down payment. He worked, he got his own name. Like I told him, if, if you can't do it on your own, you can't get it because I, I can't co-sign for you. You know, I have my own responsibilities. You know, the the biggest responsibility is for me, I have my own car and own car insurance. Mm -hmm. So when you fall short, can I help you? Well, will I help you? Yeah, I help you depending on, you know, what you did to be in that situation. But now nah, I'm not, I'm, I can't do it because I, I just have to show them like my oldest son want a new car now. Why? Because everybody else drive new cars. Okay, you want it, you got to work for it can't help you do nothing i didn't help the middle one do it you have to do it on your own or you'll be driving that car it's a nice car nothing wrong with it you got to figure it out wow. they they cars was in their own name you know they paid cash for them they was in their own name everything you have to learn this on your own so i wouldn't do it 
Philly, what's up with? Hey, I'm gonna play devil's advocate on her too, man. <laughs> y'all know me. I'm. A, I, I love playing devil's advocate. But Philly and Dre, they what y'all what y'all can chime in before I play the devil's advocate as always. Man, you know with me, it's a big hell to the night because. <laughs> Hey, I'm gonna tell you like this. I was working before I was 16. I was pushing a line more through the neighborhood, cutting yards, um, shoveling snow, all of that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So um, I had that work ethic. Uh, before I could get anything when I was younger, wanted some money to go to the mall for mom, had to make sure my chores was done. You know, so um, to me, and I see other situations too, but we don't stay on top of it. But I see other situations where people, do this and they like cleaning their kids room and shit just you know just crazy oh, stuff and, 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 you know what i'm saying so so you know when you got stuff like that going on um again like shay said you want your kids to you know have the resources that you didn't have but you don't want to spoil them that that s word that will jack them up later on that's that um the asshole that you got to work with that think that, you know, mm-hmm. everything is supposed to be given to them and stuff, you know, so you're not, mm-hmm. you know, the best thing you can do for a child is teach them how to be self-sufficient, you know, to defend for themselves without you there because you're not going to be there for them. So um, to have that kind of, you know, stuck in their mind. And again, there's always exceptions. It can be a child that has uh, special needs or something like that going on. We ain't talking about that. We're talking about, you know, just uh, the standard situation, but I wouldn't do it, man. Now, if it was a cash form, a reliable cash form, I would help a child out with that. You know, if they were working um, or trying to work or something like that, I could see a mm-hmm. cash form. You could teach them a lot on that. Put the gas in there. Make sure they stay on top of those oil changes. That's very important. Um, and teach them how to do the maintenance on it, you know. Um, All right. Show them how to build their credit and whatnot so when they're ready to get their car and open, they can do that. You know, and then also you teaching them too. You teaching them not to keep up with the Joneses. Uh, I had a couple of friends that were promising their boys charges and stuff like that when they were graduating. I didn't agree with that at all because you're trying to, you, you know, you're teaching them, you know, hey man, you got to be trendy. And there's nothing against the charger, but right. you don't have to do that. These boys are young and, you know, you know, not to wish bad or nothing like that, but. You know, the city I live in, you know, people may try to pull you about that job. You know, yeah, especially yeah, if man. you hey, don't have behind the ears, too. So, we talk um, about to, the Lou, man. The Lou, they get you about that, that charge. Yeah, that's quick. treacherous. Yeah. Treacherous. You hear me? So, yeah. so mm-hmm. yeah, you can't, uh, to me, you can't do that for a lot of reasons. But the main thing, uh, you got to teach, uh, you know, that person that work at, man, to where, you know, you work for this, you work hard, and you get that charger. Or uh, you know the Cadillac or shit that do it. You know what I'm saying? You get whatever you want to get. You know, but right. uh, I feel like uh, budgeting and you know other things are more important than getting them a car. And then, like I said, paying a car note too. Oh no, hell no. Yeah. Man, yeah. Dre, mm-hmm. you want to chip in on it before I do? Be before I be the devil? Sure, sure. Um, I kind of have mixed feelings about this because I am one of those you, people. You poor yeah. devil too did. Yes. Hey, I literally devil. went out when my son was in the seventh or eighth grade and I bought a charger that was intended for him when he graduated. Um, he graduated and didn't want it. So I still have mm-hmm. it. You know, it's still mine. Um, but also... I have a very good friend uh, who is from an affluent family in Port Arthur, whose dad, she's the oldest of three. Her dad purchased all of them new cars when they were getting ready to start college. He put them on his credit cards to give them a credit score. Um, He had I, not necessarily trust fund, but he, they each had an account that had a substantial amount of money in it um, for when they decided to get out on their own. Um, and I remember going down there and, you know, I would go down there all the time and hang out. And he he told me, he said, I do these things for my kid, kids because he said, nobody set up a foundation for me. He said, I had to scrimp and scrape and put off having a family and not do this so that I could 
be in a position to do this for my kids, which I felt was fair. Now, all that being said, all three of those kids are mad successful in life right now. And they've all always worked. Two of them have their own business. Uh, one of them has taught in several different countries. You know, each one of them is married with their families and everything. And I don't think, I think the difference in just giving, giving, giving to your kids is you really have to, along with all that giving, you have to give them a certain amount of training. And I think that's where, that's where the, that's where the disconnect is, where we just, some people just give to their kids and don't train them with what to do with it later or how to maintain it. Or mm -hmm. they teach you how to get, how to maintain, they teach you to work, they teach you to have a good work, th work ethic, but these kids don't see the value work because they don't have anything, mm -hmm. you know? So mm -hmm. I guess, I guess maybe you have to kind of put both of them in the same pot and mix it together. And that's what he was doing when he paid bills. Those kids sat down and they, they helped, you know, because folks were still writing checks back then they would write out the checks. You know, of course it was coming out of his account, but they wrote out the checks. They were the ones that took the checks down to the light company or wherever it had to go or mailed them off. You know, mm -hmm. if, if the car note needed to be paid, they the ones going over to the Chrysler dealership to make the payments and stuff like that. He was establishing that, look, this is these are the things you have to do, you know, mm -hmm. every month, every two weeks, whatever, in order to make sure that you maintain this stuff that you have been gifted with, you know? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I say it can work both ways. It can work both ways, you know? And it can, we can say, well, I'm, I'm not gonna help my kids and I'm not gonna do th this, that, and the third, but I'm gonna I'm teach them how to work. I'm gonna teach them. And then, then you have a, you might end up with a lazy bastard still. <laughs> <laughs> you, you done did all this teaching. Right. And if kid don't want to do nothing. Ooh, that's <laughs> true, though. Hey, yeah, well, that's very true. true. Yeah. I, yeah, it, yeah. It, it really, there's a lot of factors I think are involved, and you might get it right. You might get it wrong. Mm. It might work out in your favor. I don't know, but I wanted to be the type of parent that, you know, has something established for my kids. It, it, whatever little I could establish, I wanted mm. to be able to establish that and uh, pretty much got rejected out of hand. He was like, pish posh, do you know there's a bus outside I can ride? I, oh, okay, well, whatever. Hey, <laughs> hey but Dre, you, you made such a vast, oh man, you you played devil's advocate just as probably well as anybody on this one, man, because he it, it it's so true. And I think it comes down, uh, I, I, I don't want to say it, but it, it, it kind of comes down to a cultural thing as well. Because uh, what we've been trained, well, a lot of us say, hey, man, you finna work for this car. You finna go pay your own car note, your, your own insurance. But if we were in a better position from a financial standpoint, and like Dre said, you give them their training and their teaching and everything, but you want to success, set up your kids for uh, for a successful life. You want to set them up and give give them the why behind your why you're doing this and everything. Give them the why. Okay. The car note is I got the, I'm on the loan, but you are the co bar on the loan to build your credit while I'm paying this car not note happening. To, let, to let you know. <laughs> but see, like I said, it goes back to a cultural thing. Mm -hmm. It goes back to a cultural thing because you sit back, you think it ain't happening. That's what the that's that that's going that's what's going to come from your typical African American person. No, it's oh, not because yeah, you know what you know that, why. That's, see, that's, that's not going to happen. That's that's you playing that because. No. Like my sons, no, no, listen, I'm saying that because I already set my, like, I'm talking about me personally. Mm -hmm. My sons, 19 and 20, with 800 credit scores. I set them up already. So it's no way you getting ready to use my credit when you work. You can, uh, that's why I but, set you up. But, 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 but just check this out, though. Check this out. If they're going to school, they're getting ready to go. Like Dre said, Dre said, Dre, they say her friends, they were getting ready to go off to college. When you are in college and being a full-time college student, you don't want to worry about how I'm going to pay this car note, how I'm going to pay this car insurance, 
if right. you got the parents that's put you in, in a position to, hey, I'm financially able, I can do that for my children and everything. Mm -hmm. I want them to go to college, hone in, focus on getting that degree where we're investing in and everything. Once mm -hmm. they do that, then, you know, after a while, I can sign the car over to them or let them be on the car themselves and everything. But it, 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 it always comes But when they don't, well, when they don't make that choice to go to college, what do you do? When they don't make the choice to go to college, then you come up, then on the flip side, you'll say, hey, but see, that's the thing though. It goes back to a cultural thing because if they decide they don't want to go to college, they want to do something else, go into a trade or something. We're going to be like, hey, when you finish college, yeah, you, you paying your own way and stuff. But that's a lot of our mentality is black people. I'm just going to keep it real. Once you finish college, hey, you on your own. You got to you gotta pay this bill, this bill, this bill. Instead of being like, okay, you finished college. What's the plan? Let's sit down mm -hmm. and talk about the next steps. The next steps and the plan. You may not want to go to a four-year university. You may mm -hmm. want to take up a trade school, a vocational school. You may want to do something completely different. Let's talk about the next steps. So we get into we get into the next steps, and I'm not finna just let you sit home and play Madden all day with do dirty and stuff. You're not finna do that. You're not finna sit home and play Madden all day or right. play uh 2K and stuff. Mm -hmm. Or uh 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 you're not gonna do it. But if you have a plan, my job as a parent, if I'm in a financial position to really help you and help you get started. Why not help my child? Period. Why not help my but child? Then, but why even even like even, like say for the instance this if my child, like my son went to college, he didn't take his car to college with him, but they first cars was cash cars. I feel like I'm not getting ready to I'm I'm not in a financial place to do it anyway, but I'm not getting ready. Everybody right. not getting ready to be riding around in brand new cars. You right. know, you're right. going to get what we can, what I can afford for you. And I'm going to make sure I take but, care of you because you're handling your business. But you got to sit back and think too, when you're traveling back and forth. Okay. That's just a freshman year. You can't have no car on campus. Sophomore, mm -hmm. junior, senior, you can have your vehicle with you. Cause I brought my vehicle on the campus of college. So, you can drive your sophomore, junior, and senior year, but if you are away at college 250 miles away and you got to travel from college back to St. back home and stuff, you want to make sure that your child is in a reliable vehicle, period. Right. And sometimes these cash cars is good for the time that you have time. it for. That's it. When you when you're talking about putting them back and forth on the highway. 200 miles this way, 200 miles that way, 200 miles that way. Hey, some things happen and stuff. Things happen. So you want to make sure that your child has a reliable vehicle. Yeah. You, God forbid, three o'clock in the morning, your child 120 miles away. Mom, my car run out. You don't have AAA. I need you to come get me. Now you cussing and fussing. You pissed because now you got to get up out your bed to go get your child. Because why? They're not in a reliable vehicle that you could have just easily said, hey, I'm going to sign and get this car for him while he's going to school and everything with the understanding once you complete school or with the understanding uh, when you come home and work in the summertime, you give me money towards your car, car payment or your auto insurance and everything with that understanding. But you don't want your child to be stranded on the highway because then your maternal instincts will kick in and you go hop in your car and drive two and a half hours to make sure your baby is safe. I, I got that being said, oh, go ahead, Phil. I got something to add. I got a twist for that. So, you know, we're talking about like reliable transmission. When we talk about cash cars, y'all, we're not talking about the... Uh, 20 year old El Camino or exactly. some shit like that. We ain't talking about no bullshit <laughs> right. like that. Nah, we're talking about real. something within 10 years, like for real, mm -hmm. for real. All right? That's reliable transportation. The reason why I believe right. you should protect yourself with the cash car, okay? You can teach them a lot about maintenance, okay? And this is where I'm going with this. How many people do you know, grown, child, we spread it out right now, that had a car note or has a car note? And they don't keep up on their oil changes. They don't keep up on their tuners. 
they don't get their uh, brakes uh, chain switched out and stuff like that. They don't maintain their car and they have a note. How many people have you known blew some head gaskets and still had a damn note? Right. You see what I'm right. saying? So right. to me, I feel like there's a lot of um, more ways you can teach them a lesson. And it kind of goes back to what Dreeva said. Like, I love the example that she gave because that brother was teaching those kids. He was teaching them at the same time. Like, when I presented the question, it's under assumption that they ain't teaching them shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that was cool. And, um, you know, like she said, those people were successful, but it's got to go hand in hand. And training has to go with uh, the resources that you give them. So I just feel like, you know, somebody fresh out of high school or even if they're 16, because remember, I had my first job when I was 16, got on my 16th birthday. And, um, you know, so that would have been cool. I mean, I didn't have it at the time, but that would have been cool if, you know, I would have had a cash car or something like that. I don't feel like I would deserve the whatever the year was at that time for because it would have been too much for me. I'm 16, right. what I'm doing running around. And again, I'm up in the loop. I'm going to get a, get a pistol pulled on me or something. You know what I mean? Like, I can't mm -hmm. be riding like that. You know, but uh, I feel like Man. cash car protects you, but no or cash car, I think we all kind of agreement that you got to be training them. It just can't be, hey, I'm doing this for you and I just got you. We, I think we can all agree that ain't gonna help it out. <laughs> right, nope. right. Hey, nope. hey, hey, Philly. One more thing, man. If you call Dre Day Dreedy one more time, man, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna choke the hell out of you, man. You better call her Dre Day. You call her Dreedy. I'm like, who the hell is Dreedy? Like, who the hell is Dreedy, man? I thought that was his sweet pet name for me. Hey, okay, well, well I, let, I give it to him. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you, I, you, you is the Dreedy then. I got you. I, have, I got a whole friend named Dre, and I call him Dre Day. You know what I'm saying? Like, like oh Dre Day, not Dre, you know, but I got you. Hey, man, hey, man. That is, but but oh that, is, hey, that is so true, though, man. And, and like like we all say, man, if you are able to do that for your child, you want to be able to establish some boundaries within that to be able to do that for your child. Because like I said, uh, if you sit back and think, I, and I just got to ask Dre Day, I, Dre Day, was uh, your friend and their father, was they of African-American descent? Were they yes. African-American culture? Yep. Yep. That's great. That's great because because you think about it, we typically we, we some of us, but I don't say all of us, but some of us don't take that mindset. And I like the way he thought about he took it because he like, hey, nobody gave me that foundation. I'm gonna give my children that foundation and give them a jump start on how success, how to be successful and everything. I love it. And I think I think that that makes a whole lot of difference between our culture and the other culture is that those people for the most part now don't get me wrong you got some folks in the other culture that's putting their kids out at 18. yeah and they putting them out at 14 mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. um but you but then you have a large variety of them that are setting their kids up and like for a child to stay home till they 25, 26 years old, that ain't nothing. That ain't oh, nothing. Because that child is at a job and all they're doing is stacking paper, stacking paper, stacking paper. They yeah. living under mom and dad's roof. They cuss their mama out a little bit every day. Damn it, Karen. You're very close again. Karen's hey, like, huh? Hey, I, hey, I, hey, I hey, 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 they, tomorrow. Hey, they coming home. Karen is making a nice hot meal for them and everything. And yeah. hey, nine times out of ten, mom is probably doing laundry for them and everything. And that hey, that's a homemaker. That's her job. She she's not working. No. She's she's a Karen, homemaker. Karen works. Karen go to work every day. Karen and Ken, they both go to work every day. They kids go to work. They kids stingy. Don't want to give them nothing on the light bill. And Ken, Ken, Ken is like, we got this, babe. Don't you worry about it. One of these days, those kids are going to get out of here. And the way they get them kids out the house, they start asking for grandbabies. And them kids be like, I got to go. They still ask for grandchildren. Or they're Let paying their rent in a, you know, in oh, them exactly. apartments. And I'm going to be I'm going to be 100% honest in this moment. If I was able to pay for my son to move into his own apartment for a year, where I paid 
his bills for a year, I would do it. Mm -hmm. I'm not even finna lie. Tried to. <laughs> My kids one day was like, they gotta be 21. I said, damn, I was gonna do it though. Are he gonna be 21 in June. Yeah, so, they got the they yeah. They so, won't rent them an apartment before the age of 21. Well, it was the it was the apartments that they was really nice. You know, I don't want them to move anywhere here. So um I and I because I thought about downgrading. So I was like, you know, I see me and my youngest son can go together and the two oldest can go together. And you know, when I was looking at the apartment, she was like, um, how old are your sons? I was like 19 and 20. She was like, Oh, they gotta be 21. I'm like, Right. She was like, you know what? But she hey, said, you know what? It's hey, to you, stay somewhere. And hey, hmm. you you lie about every damn thing else. You could have just said the boy's 22 or 21. You gotta prove it. You lie, <laughs> you, you lie about everything else. I do not lie, first of all. You do Big lie about friend. everything else. I don't lie. <laughs> okay. But no, I I I mean they ready, but I was like, I'm not gonna rush it. I mean, we still in the house anyway. But I was, I was going to, I was going to 100% help them. They see my oldest son, he, he did not go to college, you know, and I feel like this, I'm not forcing my sons to do nothing. They don't want to do. You just have to find a boundary and find somewhere where somewhere, something you can make a career. Like you can't just be around, you know, doing nothing. Right. So, right. um, my middle son, he went to college his first year in Iowa he was kind of, you know, it did, it didn't go well with the pandemic. It was just a horrible experience. That's what happened to my son. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was so bad. But you know, they both heard. And if I could, if I could help them, you know, I've always, I, I'm, I'm in a much better place I, than I used to be financially. So I feel like, mm -hmm. you know, I could, I could help them out a little bit. I, I have them paying bills now, so they can prepare themselves when they do move. I, mm -hmm. I, I I wish you would have told my mama that uh, when me and my brother moved out when uh, when I was a junior in college, my brother was uh, was he a senior in high school? He was a senior in high school, uh, just getting ready to graduate from high school. I wish you would have told my mama that. You remember tell you what my mama told me? My mama told me. I'm uh, my mom, both my parents, my mom and my, and my dad even chimed in on that. He said, Hey, we're not finna pay for you to go over there and lay up and fornicate. Mm. I say, What? <laughs> <laughs> she just flat out, we're not finna pay for you to go up there and lay up and fornicate. I say, Man, don't do that, man. Don't yeah. do that, man. <laughs> I'm pranking. I would hope they make good decisions, you know, like, like hey, people man. always be like, They'll have people in your house. No, when I'm at work. It's nobody in my house. They don't even hardly be here. Hell, I don't know where they be, but if they ain't at work, they over one of their friends' house. But I can't, I can't control their life. But man. you just can't have it in and out of my house. Like can't right. happen. Hey man, like I said, man. Hey, if you got it, help them out. But also, it's a valuable lesson. It's a teaching. It's a teachable moment in everything you do with and for your children, man. So, with that being said, man. Uh, it's been another amazing episode. The crew, they tired, man. Uh, they they got two picks on the eyes open, man. <laughs> man. I'm glad I got this glare. I keep closing my eyes. Hey, I know everybody closing their eyes, man. But hey, we'll be back uh next week with another video, man. We'll be back live on Sunday. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be here, but the crew will definitely be here because I'll be traveling back from Boston. Uh, the crew will definitely be here, maybe. Throw a game y'all way, but yeah. Hey, man, we thank you guys for tuning in, man. We appreciate you guys. Uh, like, share, and subscribe to the videos, man. We will be back uh, on our next video with Shea Shares, Eargasms. Uh, if we ever find Chris Story, and it'll be let Chris and chill as well. But like I said, guys, we thank you for tuning in tonight, man. We are the crew, and we are out of here tonight, man. Peace. Peace.